Got my little nice outdoor fireplace set up right here. You know how I roll. Got my fire going. Got it is absolutely awesome outside today. What's up, Jeff? It is stunning outside today. It's probably 50 degrees outside here in South Louisiana. Let a few people hop on. What's up, Jeff? Please share and invite. I'll be giving away some Skeleton tickets. Man, it feels good outside. What's up, Eric? Appreciate that, buddy. Hope y'all doing good. Yeah, grab me another. Hope everybody's doing good. I know I am. Just got back from uh, Alabama and Florida. What's up, Brian? Had a few of my students on here. All right, we're ready. What's up, Cameron? I wanted to talk to you guys about something that's really critical, really, really critical to your success as a, uh, a real estate entrepreneur, right? Just a real estate investor in general, especially if you're doing wholesaling, right? Give me something, right? Because I'm about to tell you guys exactly how I do it on negotiations and why you were probably losing tons, I say tons, I mean tons of money on negotiations. And there's some fundamental reasons why you're probably losing tons of money on negotiations. What's up, Chris? What's up, Ben? What's up, Mickey? Colton, Chris, I live in Russell, Louisiana. Let's get some lunch one day. Man, that's far away from me, Colton. I, I'm three hours away from you, brother. And then I'm about to move to Florida, so I, what's up? Kilathon, that's what I really want to know. Who is coming to Skillathon to come skill up with me? Because um, I might get more out of Skillathon than you guys. Because I don't put these I don't put these events on to make money, guys. I put these events on to create relationships, right? Relationships. Let me push over, and get closer to that fire, because I'm kind of I'm kind of chilly here. There we go. Got enough people on now. Sacramento in the house. Wow. I just got back from California. My son's in, living in Grass Valley, Mickey. My son, my son just moved to Grass Valley. You know, it, negotiations is a, is a funny thing, right? It's kind of a give and take. It's a, a pull and tug back and forth of who's given up and who's taken. And, and um, you know, I see a lot of investors, especially guys I train, as they get nervous in negotiations and they, and they kind of they kinda tap out, right? Let me get out of that sun a little bit. Let's pull up a little bit. They tap out, right? They tap out meaning, what's up, Ricky? What's up, Ernie? What's up, Sean? What's up, Chris? They tap out meaning they, they don't say, Chris, what do you mean by what? What do you mean go for it all? Meaning, the reason, the fundamental reason why most of you guys are not making as much money as you possibly can on a deal is because your unwillingness, it's your unwillingness and your, your ability, your unability to find the homeowner's bottom or the seller's bottom. Ernie, you can't hear me? Is that what you're saying, Ernie? Guys, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Let's see. I'll be there leaving Shreveport. Ernie, log out and log back in, Ernie. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, good. So anyway, it's your unwillingness. Great, Ricky. It's your unwillingness to find the homeowner's bottom, right? You're not there to be fair, guys. You're, you're not a full retail buyer. You're, you're an investor. The problem with most investors, they don't make enough money. If, like a lot of these wholesalers, they get into wholesaling and they don't make enough money on deals and they have to quit because motivated sellers are liars, guys. That's what I just said. Motivated sellers are liars. You know, you know wholesaling has a bad rap like we're, you know, we're ambulance chasers or we're no good, we're scumbags. But guys, I would say it's the opposite. The homeowners... Bad connection, brother. Shit. Let me uh, let me let me connect the Wi-Fi real quick. Hold on one second, guys. Try that. Let's try. It. Is that a better connection, guys? Can you hear me better now? Connect it to Wi-Fi. Okay. Well, some people are saying I'm okay, and some people are saying I'm not okay. But I'm connected to Wi-Fi now. But you know, motivated sellers, guys, will lie to you. That's why they're motivated, and they will lie so much to you. They will actually lie to try to screw you. And it's happened to me multiple times. They will actually lie to you to screw you because that's why they're in a bad spot. 
Okay, great. Gregory says, I'm, I'm in a great connection. Okay, great. What's up, Corey? What's up, John? What's up, Eric? So you got to understand, when you're doing business, especially in the real estate side, in negotiations with either, you know, you're trying to lock up a house in a contract to flip it, wholesale it, wholesale it, or even, a, you know, an apartment complex, a mobile home park, your job is not to be fair. Your job is to find their bottom, right? Find their bottom. And if you're not, if you if you're unwilling to find the, the homeowner's bottom or the, the property owner's bottom, you're gonna leave tons of money on the table. People say, well, you gotta be fair, Chris. No, dude, it's not fair, right? If you try to be fair, that's you're gonna get burned. If you're fair, listen, what I just said, if it's in negotiations. Now, I'm not saying be unethical. I'm not saying you know be um, you know mischievous, but you gotta find the homeowner's bottom. And the way you find that homeowner's bottom is you gotta offer less than what you what what you need to get it for right so let's just say hypothetically you're trying to buy a house at hundred thousand you shouldn't offer a hundred thousand guys you should offer 70 or 80 and work your way up the value ladder because if you offer 80 you're gonna have to come up anyway because you're gonna you're gonna meet probably halfway up to that ladder and you end up getting a deal for 110 or 120 when you could have got it for a hundred if you would have started at 80 but when you make these offers guys you've got to be willing to find their bottom. What's up, Adam? What's up, Dustin? What's up, Corey? What's up, Angel? Be willing to find their bottom. If you're not willing to find the property owner, the homeowner's bottom, you're not going to be a good real estate investor. I'm sorry. You might as well stick to being a, a retail buyer. Keep, you know, that, that's what you are. Because buying at, at reasonable prices, reasonable, fair prices will get you burned in the next pullback in the next recession in the next um, slowdown you've got to buy so I think you grow you guys are grossly underestimating how discounted you need to buy as a real estate investor so you don't get hosed I know because I was reasonable you know when I first got into real estate and back in 2000 when I start, first started like really professionally making tons of offers back in 2010 and I was in real estate way before that but I wasn't like actively doing it full-time like I'm doing now I was reasonable. I was trying to be fair. And guys, if you're fair, you're going to get hosed. Learn to find the homeowner's bottom. What they say they want for the property is not their bottom. They will lie. They're motivated for a reason. They have usually they're motivated because they made a lot of bad decisions in life and it, a lot of times they will lie, hide stuff from you, be mischievous, a lot of different things. Diego says, I think asking for their bottom release pressure on both sides once the question is asked. Exactly. I, I, I call them out on it. I say, hey, listen, let's just stop BSing each other. I need to get this property for cheap. If I can't get it for cheap, then I, I, can't, I can't win and I, I can't make a profit. Like You, you guys got to be very intentional about what you're doing when you're trying to be a real estate investor. You can't beat around the bush. I tell homeowners all the time, hey, listen. I'm not a retail buyer. If, if you need a retail buyer, I get it. I, I totally understand. I know a lot of good realtors. My wife's a realtor. I can get you hooked up with them. But I can't give you anywhere close to that, ma'am. I have to get it for super cheap to where I can make a profit. And you've got to really work that bottom. And if you work that bottom strong enough and hard enough, you will capture a lot more equity on deals over time versus just trying to be reasonable and fair with a homeowner. Reasonable and fair are for retail buyers and for realtors. That's reasonable and fair, right? If you want to be an investor, you've got to be, be not reasonable, but you've got to capture as much equity as you can because you're not buying the house to live there, guys. This is an investment. This is your livelihood. If you try to be fair with the homeowner, and I, like I said, once again, don't take my words out of context. I'm not saying being unethical. I don't say lie. Be very intentional and say, I need to get this for super cheap. This is why I got to get your house for 80 grand, ma'am. If I don't make... If I don't make a lot of money on your property, I will go out of business. This is why you called me because you, you have a problem. You want me to solve your problem. But in, in, if the trade off for me to solve your problem is, is you got to get it to me for super cheap, right? And if you're intentional, you state what you're doing, why you have to get it for cheap. The homeowner typically understands, listen, I got realtors that bash me all the time. Like it's, it's a joke. It's funny. They say I take advantage of homeowners, but yet I have not one bad review, not one bad review on my Facebook or my Google account or my website. Not one. Why? Because I'm upfront. I'm honest. I state my intentions and I tell them why I need to get it for cheap 
and what I'm going to do with the property, right? I'm an investor. So if you, if you, if you have good intentions, you state your intentions, and you, and you find the homeowner's bottom, you'll make money, you'll solve the homeowner's problem, everybody wins, and you won't get hosed when you, you know, in the next recession or if you actually try to sell the property or flip it or wholesale. Dude, there's so many flippers that, that they start flipping and they end up making like five grand or break even or 10 grand on a six month project and that's why they quit. Don't watch, you, you watch too many HGTV shows, think, you know, flip my house thinking, thinking that all flippers, it's funny, you know, I was in California, right? I was in California speaking, I was talking to some, um, some real estate investors out there and they and some people want to get into real estate investing. And it's funny because most of these HGTV shows are filmed in California. Everybody's beautiful. Everybody makes millions of dollars. And it's all horse shit. And none of, it, none of it's real, right? It's all horse shit. Most, in, most flippers I know hate their life. I'd say at least 90% of people that get into flipping quit or lose money. And why is that? Because they're not willing to find the homeowner's bottom. They're trying to be reasonable. They're trying to be fair with the homeowner. That's what realtors are for. Realtors are there to be fair and reasonable with other retail buyers, not investors, guys. It's a totally different game, right? Totally different game. Let's see. We got some. Angel says, Chris, it's Jet. Great point. Separating realtor from investor. Don't be fair. Exactly. Jet, listen. It's funny because I get these realtors. I, I got one locally that's been bashing me. I had to actually call him out on it. He won't even return my calls because he, he, he knows that you know, he's just being stupid and ugly for no reason. You're not a bad guy because you're an investor. It's a business model, right? If the business model is buy low, sell high. And if you can't make a profit by buying low and selling high, there's no longer the business model. There, now, there is a value add to that exchange of service to the homeowner. They get to get out of their property quick, fast, no headache, and they don't have to wait on a realtor to go and sell their property, it might take them two, three, four, six months, sometimes a year, especially in a down economy, like I'm in a bad economy. Guys, most of you guys are in a really good economy, I'm actually in a bad economy. But you have to understand that being an investor requires a certain fortitude and steadfastness that is not normal in negotiations if you're used to the retail side. That's why it's hard to transition from like I have some uh, realtors in my program, it's hard for them to transition from being a realtor to an investor because they're like, man, I don't know, there's no way homeowners will sell their house to you for 50 cents on a dollar. Well, I, I beg to differ. I buy properties every week for 40, 50, 60 cents on a dollar every week, right? It's just, a, it's just a different customer. But stop beating around the bush, tell the homeowner that you need to get it for cheap, offer really low, you never know what they're willing to pay. Like, I bought a house so cheap one time because I made a really low ball offer and he was actually happy that I offered that much. You know, so you never know where their bottom is. If you're offering this stupid, let me, let me tell you an example, right? Most of these programs you go through that, that are real estate investor programs, they teach you to invest 70, what is it? Uh, offer 70% minus ARV plus multiplied divided by X to the fourth power. That's all horse shit, guys. You don't offer based on an exact formula every time. You offer on motivation, right? If I know somebody has to sell the house in a week because they're in pre-foreclosure, you think I'm gonna give them 70 cents on the dollar minus AR, you know, minus repair costs? No, no, because they have to sell. Now you're saying, well, Chris, you're taking advantage of a homeowner. No, I am capitalizing on a situation that I know I need to make as much money as I possibly can, right? So understand that there's, there's, t there's totally different game than going out there and, and being a realtor, right? Who's coming to Skillathon? That's what I really want to know, because this is kind of stuff that we're going to be talking about along with, you know, all kind of cool stuff on mindset, personal development, multifamily. Guys, I got, I got people come and speak that are doing $100, $150 million in sales. Entrepreneurs like, that are making boatloads of money to help you with your mindset, help you scale a business. This ain't just for real estate investors. This is for entrepreneurs, people trying to do big shit, people trying to live a life that they, they know they deserve. Don't feel like you can't come because you're not a flipper or in a wholesaler. You're not a real estate investor. Get your tickets. I'm giving 50% I'm giving 50 off right now. If you go to my, my website, matter of fact, let me post the, um, the website. Let's see, right here. There you go. And I'm giving 50% off. I'm, we'll do skills 50 for the next, probably next couple of days here. 
Let's see. Diego says, who teaches us that it's better to beat around the bush? Direct and concise is so much easier. Exactly, Diego. Listen, I watch other investors. I run circles around other investors because they, they try to lie and they try to bullshit people. I just don't lie and I don't bullshit. I just tell my friend, hey, I got to get it for cheap. People, I, you know, I, I'm not going I'm, I'm to say this and don't take it wrong. I'm not saying this to be ugly. I'm not even saying this to come off conceited. I'm so good at this that other investors and other realtors think that I'm a con artist because I get properties for so cheap. And the, and the secret is, is there is no secret. I just tell them what I need to get it for and why I need to get it for that price. And either they're motivated or they're not, and they freaking go for it, right? It, it's, you can't force motivation, guys. Either they got a problem or they don't. And you can only get a deal if, you got, if you're in good rapport, you state your intentions, and you're solving a problem, right? And they have to be motivated. There's no, re there's no way around it. Like either they're motivated or they're not. Um, what's up, Jeremy? Carlos says, so true, flip this house on TV is unreal. Exactly, it's all bullshit. But anyway, guys, I wanna see you at Skillathon. I'm telling you, if you wanna level up your life, you know, it's funny, cause I'm, I'm probably not even gonna talk on real estate a whole lot, cause I've got a bunch of other guys coming that are really, really good at, at stuff that I may not be good at, or maybe they're just as good, I don't know, maybe they're better than me, but the real, the real meat and potatoes of what I like to talk about at these conferences is, um, you know, a lot of it's personal development, mindset, and getting around the right people, right? So if you're trying to level up, if you're in a struggle bus, maybe, uh, maybe you're in a bad environment. Maybe you're around people that are suppressing you, telling you you can't do this, or you're no good, or uh, you're just not worthy. I'm here to tell you, if you're watching me and you follow me, if you're even trying to reach at a degree that um, most people are not used to and they're, criti they're being critical of you because you're trying to do something better than what you're doing now, you got to get out of that environment, right? It's a suppressive environment. Most people can't handle other people trying to be successful because they're not trying to be successful. And if they watch you trying to be successful, it gets them very insecure around you because they don't want to see you do well because they think that your win is their loss. Listen, I just said, I'll repeat myself. They think that your win equals their loss. And it's, and it's, it's kind of a, a nasty, screwed up mindset, but it's funny. A lot of people on this planet think that way I don't want people around me to lose. I want everybody around me to win because the more people around me that win, the more I win, right? You know, that's why I got students that come in my program. I got partners that are making money. I want them to win because I can't, I can't win at a high level unless people around me are winning. I can't be around a bunch of losers and win, right? Where do I look for these customers? I know there is, there is no stupid question, but I feel like this is... Okay, so you, Mickey, you got to start a wholesaling business, my brother. Go to chrisroot.com or inbox me. I can help you with that. All wholesaling is is a professional marketing business, you know, marketing for motivated sellers, right? They're out there. People, not everybody cares about the money when it comes to their house. Shit, I sold, let me, guys, let me give you an example. Another great example, right? I get realtors all the time telling me I'm taking advantage of people. Last year, I sold three houses for a net loss of $70,000 between all three because I didn't care about the money. I could have rehabbed them and probably broke even, but time is more valuable to me, valuable to me than money. I stroked the check and got out of it. And I, one, one house I lost $40,000 on, another house I lost uh, 20, another house I lost 10, just to get out of it. So people, and, I, and I'm a professional investor. I do this full time for a living. And I was willing to sell at a huge discount and lose money. You don't think the normal guy out there is willing to sell at a discount and lose money? Absolutely, right? The smartest investors in town, the smartest investors in this planet are not retail buyers, guys, right? When there's blood in the streets, that's when you make all the money. And I hate to be like that. I hate to say that it kind of sounds nasty. You know, you're just an investor slash, you know, crook. No, man, listen, you're not a full retail buyer. Investors have to buy discounted. If you're not buying discounted, you're going to get your ass handed to you. So, Mickey, if you're interested, you know, inboxing, man, I can show you the ropes on how to market to motivated sellers, right? What's up, John? Where is Skillathon? Skillathon is in New Orleans this year, December 6th and 7th. If you get Premier VIP, the last day I got a house I rented on Bourbon. I got a house on Bourbon. We're going to hang out with me, Big Mama Rude. We're going to cook a crawfish etouffee and all the speakers for four hours, 10 at 2. We're going to network and just get to – and that's what it's about, guys. The information that's going to be given in this event is going to be awesome. The real value, the real wealth, the real knowledge is in the relationships you're going to make with the speakers over there the people in the crowd and just the the value exchange of what somebody else may know that you don't that you can actually guys that shit my new business partner now i met him in an event like this right 
that's that's where you that's where you you're gonna meet guys that are trying to do what you're trying to do that they're they're trying to do big stuff right they're trying to make money they're trying to help you out there entrepreneurs are looking for other entrepreneurs if you're an entrepreneur and if you're questioning like am I an entrepreneur I don't know am I an entrepreneur you're probably an entrepreneur if you're on my live watching me and you follow me you're probably a secret entrepreneur or you're a closet entrepreneur and you don't know and you haven't um, you haven't waved your entrepreneur flag yet because you're nervous or you don't know yet but other entrepreneurs are looking for other entrepreneurs to network and this is why I put on these events I don't put on these fucking events to make money I ain't making no money off this event the capital main the, the capital made off of this event is in the relationships I'm gonna forge from this event with the speakers the crowd and the long-term relationships I'm gonna make with people that may turn into business business ideas um, different service providers um, networking of maybe doing a deal together a JV like that that's what it's about right can't wait uh, can't wait for it skeleton Diego you coming to skeleton my brother get your tickets I'm telling you it's worth every every penny they, there's no reason you can't come Eric says I'll be the first in line at skeleton leaving Shreveport at 2 a.m. that's awesome Eric I can't Eric's in my program I can't wait to meet you there the more confident I get in making the low offers, the more I'm, I'll succeed. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, let's see. Skillathon and Nola at the Hilton Riverside. That's exactly right. What's up, Leo? Leo's coming to Skillathon also, man. He just joined the program. Congrats on that, Leo. Ernie says, if you've never been to one of these, you'll need to go to this one. You will leave a better version. Of, that's exactly right. Ernie's one of my students here locally from Lafayette. Um, he came to my event last year. If you don't know who I am, and maybe you follow me locally, and maybe you follow me across the country, I don't know, maybe in Canada, I'm telling you, I will provide so much value to you that if you don't like the event and you paid money, I give you money back. There's no way. There's no way that you're going to come and not show that. Vic Titmus is on here. My, 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 my man, Vic Titmus is actually coming is one of the speakers let's see if Vic Titness wants to come on live Vic you want to come on live my brother we can maybe pull on Vic Vic is a one of the probably one of the most successful entrepreneurs I know and he's speaking at, at my event um, let's see what he says what's up Justin let me see if uh, Vic's still on Nope, looks like Vic might have jumped off. Vic, I'm not showing that you're even. Oh, look, there he is. Let's see. You might want to log on and log back off, Vic. Let's see if it'll let me. There he is. It's not, Vic, are you from a, you're going to have to be on, it's not giving me the option. Log in and log back in. Are you on your phone, Vic? If you're on your phone, that may be, uh, or if you're on your computer. But log off and log back in. I'll pull you back on. It's not giving me the option. Let's see. Mm, let's see here. Why is it not letting me? I see you, but it, it says your viewers. I don't know, Vic. Log, log off. Come off of it and come back on. But guys, you want to come listen to Vic. Listen, Vic is... Um, Vic's a good buddy of mine from Tampa. The guy is a machine. He's, he's, a, he's a true blue entrepreneur. He's the kind of entrepreneur that came from nothing, almost failed, hit rock bottom, and now has the fastest and the biggest sleep apnea company in the country. He's been on the Inc. 5000 list for what, uh, three, four, five years in a row. This guy's a monster entrepreneur. This is the kind of guys you need to come listen to to level up your, your mindset, right? Because it's not it's not always it's not always about the information everybody thinks like you gotta have the right information you do have to have the right information but if information were enough were, were enough and if information alone were the the only ingredient everybody's be successful because information is everywhere like it's all online it's all it, it's it's ridiculous that people think that all you need is the right information you as a lot of it's how you think how you think about yourself others you know how disciplined you are you know how how talented you are with with people like there's so many fundamental key things you, this is why I call it skillathon right because it's different skill sets you need to become a successful entrepreneur you gotta listen that's why I have people coming talking about culture leadership you know uh, mindset like all these different things like you it being a real estate entrepreneur is no different than being a 
you know, a regular entrepreneur in a sense that you have to have all these different skill sets. So I'm going to have all these different guys come help you level up your mindset, right? Let's see. Diego says, I've noticed that people are usually willing to sacrifice the profit or money just to fix the big ass problem that's causing them stress that so they can't move on. Yeah, Diego, look, most people are stuck in their ways, man. They, um, they want to be right, right? Most people want to be right rather than to live in the truth. This is what I just said. Most people want to be right rather than to live in the truth because if they're made wrong or they realize they're wrong, they cave themselves in because they feel bad just because they want to be right. Like, I don't have to be right. If I'm wrong, well, great, I'm wrong, right? I just want, I just want to be right in the sense that I got the right information and I'm living in my truth, right? But most people don't, they, they don't want to step out of their comfort zone either, right? Or maybe they're in a bad environment. There's a lot of bad shit. There's a, you know, there's a lot of people that are just in a bad, bad situation, in a bad environment. Vic, I wish I could bring you on. It's not even giving me the option to bring you on for some reason. I don't know why. But anyway, guys, make sure you follow Vic Tipness. But he'll be at Skillathon. Uh, what's up, Chris? I'm following on live. And awesome, Shannon. But guys, if you have any questions, let me know. But you got to understand, this is, this is where you're going to, this is where you're going to level up, guys. This is where you'll get to a point where, you know, you realize you're not alone. There's people out there just like you that are trying to do big stuff, that are trying to level up, that are trying to make it to the next level, and there's nothing wrong with that. And if you're surrounded by a bunch of, you know, I'm going to call them plugs here, you know, in South Louisiana, we kind of use, we like to use uh, different terms. Um, you know, I call them plugs, right? They're plugs in the sense that they're, they're stuck in their ways, right? A lot of people are stuck in their ways. They they don't want to. They don't want to do. They don't. They don't want to get out of their own way, right? And you got to get out of your own way, and you got to get out of the environment you're in. You got to get to a point where, you know, you want to do better, right? And and the only way to do better is to get out of get out of your own way and get out of get out of the environment you're in and get into a fresh environment where people are just are thinking just like you. They want to. They want to do well they want to do good they want to see other people around them doing well right chris says the skillathon is only once a year yeah andrew i do skillathon once a year and it's december 6th and 7th and i do a couple masterminds in my beach house in destin florida a couple times a year but yeah skillathon is only once a year it's a big event it's a lot of stress for me to put it on listen i don't like putting on these events just as much as you don't like to come to these events because i gotta get uncomfortable just putting on these events they ain't nothing that's great that happens by being comfortable. So I know you're like, well, I got Christmas, I got this going on, I got that going on, it may cost money, it's going to be uncomfortable. Listen, I get it. It'll probably cost me $70,000 to put on, 70, uh, on uh, Skillathon, but I do it because it's worth it because I know I'm the, the networking, the people I get to hang around with, I get to network with you, and the relationships I'm going to forge out of this are second to none. But if you're just coming on, guys, you have to watch it from the beginning. I talked about, you know, why. What's up, Rob? What's up, Adrian? I, what's up, Jeremy? I talked about why most people fail when they're a real estate investor. And it's because they're not willing to find the homeowner or the, or the property owner's bottom, right? You know, they're not willing to find that bottom. And I'm not going to go into it all over again because I already talked about it. But there's an actual technology of how you find that bottom. You, you, can't, you can't be a retail buyer. You can't be fair. Like you, if you're trying to be fair and reasonable, you're going to get hosed, right? And that was, the, um, that was kind of the, the live I talked about earlier. So go rewatch it. But, you know, for now, like, I'll, guys, if you want to know about all this stuff, I've got guys that are killing it in the game. And, I, look, I don't claim to know it all. I, I know I'm really good at this. You know, I have a track record to show it. But I've got people that are maybe good at things that I'm not good. I've got a guy named Steve Trang. He's a freaking killer at this, too. He's, uh, he, he actually has the uh, Real Estate Disruptors podcast, and he is probably got one of the best podcasts in the country. He, he interviews the who's who of real estate investors across the country and real estate entrepreneurs. He's going to be speaking. I've got a guy named Irby from Mobile, Alabama, um, who's freaking crushing it in Mobile, killing the game, just like I am in Louisiana. He's going to come speak on how to, how to crush it in a small market. And I've got guys that I got a guy named Will Morris who is actually, he is you know like 20 something years old, really young guy. He bought 650 units all off of social media, doing um, 
syndication, right? Doing just off the syndication, crazy. So th this is the kind of guys that, that you can list. I've got guys like Judge Graham sold multiple, multiple businesses for multiple eight figures. You know, like monster entrepreneurs. I'm gonna show you how to scale a business, how to create culture. I got a guy named uh, Miguel Catelier, who's a partner of mine in another business. Unbelievable, unbelievable entrepreneur. Super young guy. He got nominated for Entrepreneur of the Year of Canada. He's going to come speak. We got a guy named Matt M Morano. If you don't know Matt, Matt's a big time entrepreneur. He um, he's bought and sold businesses. He runs a huge business, and he's going to come speak to you guys about you know entrepreneurship. So all these different things, you know, they tie into one another. I got a guy coming. I even got a guy that's coming to talk to you about health and fitness and how how important it is in being super fit and healthy to be a high performance entrepreneur. And I, me and Big Mama, you're gonna be talking about you know entrepreneurship for for married married couples, right? Like we're gonna hit every aspect of the of the game and business because that it's you got to be dynamic, guys. You can't just be a one trick pony. So if you can't come to Skillathon, shame on you. Figure out how to come. I promise you, it will be worth every penny. If it's not, I'll give you money back. I promise you. What's up, Kent? What's up, Stephen? Adrian, if you want to come to Skillathon, I'll post the link. I'll post it again here, right here, just so you have it. If you want to come, I've got. I'm running a discount. Skills 30. Type in at checkout. Skills 30, and you can come for super, super cheap. And I promise you, this will be the best conference you've ever been to. It's 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 very intimate in the sense that you can come and talk to the speakers, network, and uh, I promise you, if you don't like it, like I said, I'll give you money back. That's how confident I am in it. Let's see, we've got some questions. Any questions? What's up, Linda? Geneva, end of the year, and considering if I should keep my REI license, we are wanting to learn, uh, lean toward investing and not sure what to do. L listen, there's nothing wrong with keeping your license. I, I would keep it, you know? You can do both. Why can't you do both, right? Andrew says, okay, no, no problem. Absolutely understand the value. I start your program this week. Awesome, Andrew. Can't wait to have you, my brother. When, so you, you haven't signed up and you're, and you're signing up this week? Is that what, you, is that what you're saying, Andrew? Because you're going to get a free Skillathon ticket once you sign up. And guys, if you're interested in my real estate and entrepreneurship program, you will get a free Skillathon ticket. So you get two for one. If you, if you hire me as your coach, I will give you a free Skillathon ticket. So let's see. I'm off to go get more deals. Thanks for the wisdom. Awesome, man. Awesome. You have to get around the right people. Don't ask how. Ask who is at the level you want to reach. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. What's up, Michael? Anyway, guys, any questions, any concerns, anything you're struggling with, get to New Orleans December 6th and 7th. If you get Premier VIP, it's the uh, 8th. Oh, awesome. Okay, you already signed up, Andrew. That's fantastic. That's awesome, dude. Signed up already. Conference call with you tomorrow. That's right. Uh, that's right. You are on my schedule. I saw somebody has that on my schedule. I had to call. Are you coming to Skillathon? Because if you're getting a free ticket, you might as well, my brother. Make sure you get there. Any other questions about negotiations? You know, negotiations and report building is like it's – everybody try to, tries to overcomplicate it. Like just, just have a conversation with somebody. And, and really listen, like, don't just talk. Listen, you know, solve their problem, and, um, you know, be honest and intentional about what you're trying to do. Like, don't beat around the bush. Don't, don't pretend that you're not trying to buy their house at a super discounted rate, right? Don't, don't pretend. Because if you pretend you're going to be a fraud, like you're a phony, like, and they got to see through all that shit. Like, I tell them, hey, look, ma'am, and if you explain to them why you got to get it for so cheap, that you're not living in it, that you, you have to make money, they totally understand, and they want you to make money. That's what some people can't realize. They think that, you know, they, they're going to think that you're a scumbag or a scam artist because you're trying to buy a property for cheap. No. Most people, when you tell them what you do, they totally understand. They want you to make money. They don't want you to lose money. And they just want their problem to go away. It's as simple as that. Like, it ain't rocket science, guys. It's buy low, sell high. Solve a problem, get paid. Boom. That's the business. Right? That's the business. It ain't, it ain't hard. 
So anyway, what's up, Danny? Hope you guys are doing good. I love this time of year. You got a fire going in the background. The you know, sun's going down here in beautiful South Louisiana. Even though I'm gonna be moving to, uh, I'll be moving to Florida here probably in the next six weeks to start a new business with another guy and expanding my real estate business over in Florida. But this is why I love this business, guys. Like. Exactly, then to buy low, sell high. It's as simple as that. It ain't rocket science. But, um, you know, it, it's uh, entrepreneurship's a lonely journey, guys. That's what you have to understand. That's, I got a lot of guys coming that are gonna be talking on that. Like, it, if you wanna be liked or admired or if you're trying to impress people because you're not sure you're trying to make your mom or dad proud, shit, you may insult most of the people around you by trying to be an entrepreneur. You may, and it's not even that you're insulting them, you're scaring them. Listen, I just said, you're scaring them. And you're probably like, what do you mean? What do you, how am I scaring them because I want to be an entrepreneur? Because it takes so much courage to be an entrepreneur. It takes so much wherewithal that when you start doing that, and if you get any type of success or maybe you're doing good, it makes the other person around you wrong because they're going to see in you what they wish they could be doing. I'll say that again. They're going to see in you what they wish they could be doing. And they're going to make you wrong for that. And they're going to be maybe jealous and upset. And they're going to tell you you're stupid. You shouldn't do that. My whole life I've been told I'm stupid. I'm an extremist. Um, I'm a con artist. Um, I'm no good. Now, this is only coming from people. This ain't coming from everybody. This is coming from people that, that have a lack, a, a, a mental lack they're, uh, I'll put it, they're, they're mentally uh, challenged in a sense that they're, they're non-entrepreneurial and they, um, they can't stand to see other people do well, right? But you're going to get that. For every entrepreneur, for every entrepreneur, there's going to be a, a haterpreneur. That's what I just said. For every entrepreneur, there's going to be a haterpreneur. So if you're trying to be an entrepreneur, you're trying to pull yourself out of the financial matrix, you're trying to make a little bit of money, you're trying to do well for yourself, you will get hated on. Embrace it. It's part of the journey. There's nothing you could do about it. You could, you could try to explain yourself to you. I've even tried to like, I couldn't figure out. I was like, even like family members, or even like, you know, try to explain. Don't even try to, you can't even explain yourself because they just, it's not you. Understand it's not you. It's them. It's them. Like they get insecure because you're doing something they wish they can do or you're doing something that they maybe failed at and they don't want nobody else to do well at that because if you win at something they lost at, it makes them feel like shit. And it's okay, and you should feel sorry for those people and you should like understand them and not get, like that's why I'm like, I don't care like if I get haters. Great, it's another hater. Hey, you, get, you hate me? Great. Hey, get in line, right? Get in line. I don't really give a shit, right? I don't care. Now, I see other people doing well, I don't hate on them. I'm like, hey, what is this guy doing that I don't know that I can maybe learn from? That's how people that are not haters act, right? What books would you recommend, Geneva says? I would recommend, these are the books I recommend to my students. The first books on mindset is The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Walter. Waltz D. Wallace, one of, I think that's his name, yeah. The Science of Getting Rich, I've read that book seven, eight times. Phenomenal book, quick and easy read. You can read it in probably three, three hours, right? Waddles. Waddles, Waddles D. Waddles. My wife just had to, had to uh, correct me, but uh, I, that's the first book on mindset. Um, then I would, uh, then I would read. Yeah, Leo says the source of the deal. Yeah, that's right. The first one. That's right, Leo. Thank you. Thank you for saying that, Leo. The source of the deal is the first book, the one I wrote. I'm actually writing a second book here soon called Potential. How to live up to your potential. But um, the second book is um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Great book. Third book is the uh, the Twelve Laws of Success by Napoleon Hill. Those three books on mindset are great. Uh, there's actually a fourth book, and this book is really good because it kind of deep dives who you think you are and like your belief system about who you think you are. And that book is the uh, is Psycho Cybernetics by Max um, Max what's it uh, Max shit. I haven't read it in a while. I've read it two or three times. Great book, um, Max Waltz. Max, Max. Anyway, it's it's called Psycho Cybernetics. Phenomenal book. 
It's about belief systems about yourself. Those four books on mindset, you have to read. Because entrepreneurship, guys, is so hard. Trying to do big stuff is so hard that if you're not mentally grounded, if you're not mentally stable, you're probably going to fail because you're going to quit because it gets hard. Either external forces like your environment, people, your family, friends, so-called friends, are going to start bashing you because you're trying to do something greater than yourself. Um, so those, those, that, this is why you got to read books on mindset and you got to psych yourself out, right? And then the next book, the next couple books on, another good book too on mindset too is a Be Obsessed or Be Average by Grant Cardone. It, it kind of allows you to be, you know, pull out the freak inside of you because you got to be, you know, you got to be obsessed. I like the word fanatical better. Like, you know, you got to, anybody that's ever done anything great on this planet has been a fanatic. It's been a fanatic, right? Be obsessed or be average. Then you, you know, then you have three books I recommend on action and habits and routines. And the first one is The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. Great book on, on action. Next one is uh, Darren Hardy's The Compound Effect. Phenomenal book. Pick that book up. Um, next book on daily habits and routines is The Slide Edge. Phenomenal book. The Slide Edge is a great book to get you rolling. Then on, you know, Communication skills is the um, everybody thinks, or everybody everybody communicates, or everybody communicate. No, everybody. I'm sorry. Hold on. I haven't read it in a while. Everybody talks, but few communicate. I think that's what it's called. Everybody talks, but few communicate. Everybody communicates, but few connect. Ah, everybody. My wife just connect. Uh, just <laughs> just told me again. I've been drinking too much wine. Everybody. Communicate. Everybody communicates, but few connect. Sorry, guys. Thank you, Big Mama. Big Mama's in there. Big Mama's in there. She's good for something. She's in there cooking a, 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 gumbo. a gumbo. Look at her right there in that leopard. Rarrow. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, Everybody Communicates with Few Connect. That's a great book on communication skills. Um, what's some other good books I recommend? There's so many books, guys. I, I mean, look, you should be a, a savage reader. Like, if, if you're on this live and you even follow me or if you're trying to do anything of of substance you should be a, a savage savage reader so anyway guys get your butt to skeleton these are like all these things we're talking about like these are different topics we're going to talk about at skeleton like there's so many good speakers like i can't even i'm so pumped this year because last year was great this year is going to be fucking epic epic you will leave blown away your mindset will go through the roof you you'll leave a new you like you'll leave with a clear-cut path of what you want to do how you want to do it and what you need to do, right? So get your tickets. Like, don't mess around. Like, you can get some tickets for 250 bucks. <laughs> 250 bucks. If you were to hire all these mentors that are coming, it would cost you, it would probably cost you 300 grand. And you can have them all for two days if you just do general admission for 250 bucks with the discount I'm giving now. So get, get your butt to Skeleton December 6th and 7th. I promise you, you will not regret it. You, you, you wish you paid me more money, put it that way, because I ain't doing this event to make any money. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to connect with you, and I'm trying to connect with speakers. I'm trying to connect with people that, that can help me take it to the next level, and it's not really the information. It's the relationships, right? The information's going to be great. Don't get me wrong. The relationship's going to be great, but just being around an environment like that of high energy, um, where everybody wants to win and everybody wants everybody else to win, is is next level right most people are not in an environment like that most people are in an environment where it's um don't don't do anything that that's scary don't do anything that may be risky um don't take any chances it's funny right so this is your event if you're if you're an entrepreneur if you're an aspiring entrepreneur maybe you're a young cat you're 22 years old and you just heard about me and you're trying to get into real estate and you're trying to become an entrepreneur even if you have, I don't know, maybe you have a landscape company, right? Maybe you have a, um, I don't know, AC company or manufactured company. Who cares? What, Mom? Maybe, maybe you have a son or somebody you want to like bring. Take the yeah, may, yeah, maybe, maybe you have a son or something and share the stream. Maybe you want to, you want to come or maybe tag somebody who needs to hear this, and I'll maybe give them a free ticket. Or who knows? Or, sh or share or buy farm as a gift. Like this is the best Christmas gift you can give somebody. And if you are coming. Bring your fucking wife. Excuse my language. Bring your wife. Bring your husband. Don't come over here by yourself. 
especially if you don't have any kids. If you ain't got no kids, ain't no excuse. If you got kids, get a babysitter or bring your kids. They got the zoo next door. Hell, I'm bringing all my kids. Listen, I'm bringing all of my kids to my event. They're going to be running around half. You know, if you follow me, my little baby's going to be running around screaming, hollering, acting crazy and stupid. You need to get your kids in an environment like they need to get your husband in an environment, like your wife in an environment. Your, your kid, right, that maybe he's 18, this is the best gift you can give him. The stuff that's going to be dropped in this conference is you'll never hear in college. Nobody will talk about this stuff in school. Nobody. Nobody. I promise you. Bring somebody that can benefit this. Chris, can I bring my son? Absolutely, Louis. Let, let me know. I, I'll, as long as you cover his, uh, I'll give you a, such a discounted price, Louis, on it, on bringing him. Now, honestly, yeah, you got to pay for him because if there's no value exchange, like, it's got to cost somebody. But Leo, I'm talking like I'm, I'm gonna give it to you for like so cheap. Yeah, I want you to bring your son. I just got to cover his, you know, his general admission. But it's, I'll give you. Being that you already bought your tickets and you're in my program, I'm gonna give you like I'm talking. I'll in your box here. It'll be so ridiculously stupid. You'll see. But anyway, bring your family. You can't, you can't do all this alone. You're only as strong as your weakest link. That's why I do. Listen, guys, I, I pulled all my kids out of school. All my kids are homeschooled. My kids are, don't, don't even go to regular school. I homeschool all my kids. I don't do what everybody else does. I make them read personal development books. I make them read books on like, stuff that I want them to learn about. Mindset, right? Personal development. You know, I get my wife into personal development. Like, if you're not, if you're not trying to actively level up, like my, my employees, you know, my employees do personal development. My, my partners... All of my partners that I'm in different markets that all do personal development, right? So understand that you're only going to succeed to the degree that how personally developed you are. Jim Rome said it best, and I'm sure he's, and I, he probably didn't even say this. He probably got it from somebody else, and he, he said it and tried to claim it. But Jim Rome says, he probably got it from his mentor who got it from another mentor who got it from another mentor, right? It's all, it all carries forward. Your personal finances seldom exceed your personal development. Listen to what I just said. Your personal finances seldom exceed your personal development. So meaning you only make as much money to the degree of how personally developed you are. That's why the theme of Skillathon is, is, is not skills or real estate or wholesaling. It's how to become the best version of yourself. Right? Because if you become the best version of yourself, you can scale your life, your business, you can make more money, you can do better, bigger and better things. What's up, Steve? What's up, Steven? What's up, Brandon? Steve, I've been trying to get a hold of you, my brother. I don't know if you, uh, you reached out to me to call you. I called you three times and you don't want to talk. I don't know if you're scared or you, I say you're scared or you're probably just too busy or, you know, I'm trying to help you, my man. Hell, I want you to come to Skillathon. Try to come to Skillathon. I'll hook you up with some tickets. Brandon, you coming to Skillathon? Steven, you coming to Skillathon? But anyway, guys, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta level up, guys. You gotta, you gotta skill up to level up, right? You know, and, and it ain't gonna be easy. I don't, I'm not the guru that's gonna sit here in the live and tell you, hey, join my program, you're gonna make a million bucks, it's so easy, anybody can do it. No, I'm here to tell you it, it's hard, you're probably gonna fail. Because you're probably going to cop out and listen to your, your auntie or your mom or your cousin or your dad or your, um, you know, your, your friends and, because they tell you that you can't do it, all this bullshit, right? But you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself to come, right? There's no way I could have gotten as far as I've gotten if I wasn't personally developed. I've spent, ton, I've spent so much money on personal development, it's probably scary. It would probably scare you. Well, make it happen, Brent. I'll hook you up, man. I'll get. I'll hook you up with some tickets, dude. Let, let's let's figure out how to get there. So, Leo says, can't be scared to become an entrepreneur. You owe it to yourself, guys. You owe it to you. Like Big Mama just said, you owe it to your wife and kids. And listen, and, and even if you don't become an entrepreneur, it doesn't mean like you lost or you're less than an entrepreneur. But you owe it to yourself to try. And if, and if. Even that, it's not even about being an entrepreneur. Like, you should be an entrepreneur. Like, if you're not the best employee in your company, then you need to come to this event. If you're not the best employee, if your boss doesn't think that you provide so much value that you're indispensable to the company and there's no way they can fire you, 
then you need to come to this event because not everybody's built to be an entrepreneur and not everybody should be an entrepreneur. I'm not here to say, I'm not here to even tell you that. I'm not I'm not beating the drum for entrepreneurship and saying everybody should become an entrepreneur and if you're an entrepreneur you're better than everybody. No, like you should be the best damn employee to your boss so that he you can help him make as much money to help him scale that business so he can pay you more, right? Big Mama says this world is hard, you need coaching to become the best self. That's exactly right. And look I I'm not sitting here telling you I know it all and, I, and, I, and I'm the best freaking real estate wholesale. Well, no, I, I, I beg different. I am the best wholesale real estate. I, I would put myself against anybody. And I say that with the most kindness and the most, you know, conviction. Listen, I'm that good. Come hang out with me for a couple days. Come, come spend a few days with me. There ain't no, there's no other wholesale coaches doing what I'm doing. They're not as dynamic. They're not as diverse. You know, I'm, I'm taking down deals in four states. I'm buying mobile home parks in two states. I'm doing land development. I'm buying small apartment complexes. I'm not just doing wholesaling. I, I talk to you guys about wholesaling because it's the ABCs, it's the one, two, threes of real estate. Wholesaling is like going to elementary school for real estate investing. If you don't know how to buy low, negotiate, make offers, evaluate, this is what wholesaling is, a, is about, right? It's the ABCs, it's the one, two, threes. If you, don't, if you ain't got that down, you're gonna, you are going to struggle. What's up, Philip? Thank you for accepting my friend. Anytime. What's up, Evo? Wish you could come to Skeleton. Evo is one of my students. Hope you're doing good, my brother. What's up, Jeff? But anyway, guys, Evo was there last year. He'd tell you how awesome the event was. I mean, it, you, you got to get there, guys. It's, it's, not, it's not something that, that's going to be easy. Like, it's tough, like, taking two or three days out of your schedule, paying money, Getting, but the money, like the money, shouldn't even be that big of an issue because the tickets are so cheap. That's not an excuse. The tickets are so cheap. That's not an excuse. But it is going to be uncomfortable to leave your family or even bring your family with you, and you should bring your family with you. You should come and um, and make an effort to to you owe it to yourself. Make an effort to be there, right? Philip says I'll watch every time you're on. Come to Dallas, Fort Worth. Appreciate that, Philip. But anyway, guys, get to Skeleton. I promise you, if you buy a ticket and you don't like it, I'll give you your money back. And if you think I'm a piece of shit afterwards, or you, hell, you may think I'm dumb, stupid, ugly, whatever, I don't give a shit. There's no way. It's just, there's no way it's going to happen. You may think my wife's ugly, or I, I talk funny because I'm from Louisiana, or uh, hey, maybe, uh, maybe you just think I'm full of shit. Maybe I am. Who knows? But I know my students don't think that. And I know I, I, I know I got checks to prove it. I know I'm scaling my real estate business and I know I'm doing better and better in life. Do I have problems? Yeah. Absolutely. I got problems. You better not think your wife's ugly. I better not think my wife's ugly? No, I don't think anybody I don't, I don't think anybody I don't think anybody thinks that, big mama. What y'all think? I don't I don't think no, uh -uh. she's got a round. She got leopard skin on right now. I'm gonna see what she can let's see. Let's she's big mama. Let's go check out Big Mama here in a second. Let's go see what she's up to. Let's go check out, listen, not only, and listen, if you come, Big Mama's going to cook for you. Big Mama's going to cook for you. Let's go check out what she's got going on in here. Check out this gumbo. Big Mama's got a gumbo going on. Let's go check out what she's got going on in here. Check out this gumbo. Oh, it's, a, oh, it's two to three seconds. Anyway, Big Mama... Big Mama's gonna cook for you. She's gonna cook for you Sunday night. We're gonna cook a crawfish etouffee. We got a house that we bought, I say bought, we, we rented on Bourbon Street where we're gonna hang out, network with all the speakers. Let me sit by this fire. It's getting pretty cold out here. Oh, let's see right here. Get close to that fire. But anyway, hope you guys. Try to make it. I hope it's. Uh, hope this live gave you value. I want to see you do good. You know, shit. I want to do good. I want you to help me do good. I want you to come support me, right? You know, I want you to come support me so I can support you. you know, get a ticket. Come. And uh, what's up, Elton? What's up, Adam? Help me help you, right? I'm putting this event together. I got people from all over the country coming. You know, it it, it definitely got me out of my comfort zone. Hell, I don't even want to put on these events. 
I don't want to put on these events. I do this shit, like I said, because I want to network with you and I want to build relationships with you, the speakers, and hell, it may turn into a business, right? Yeah, I've done business with probably with at least two or three, two or three of the speakers over there that I met at masterminds, at conferences. So get to the event. If you're interested in my, my wholesale, or, and listen, guys, I have a mobile home park program. If you're interested in, in mobile home parks, I just finished the mobile home park course. If you're interested, go to chrisroot.com or inbox me. I'd love to help. If you want to learn about wholesaling, hoteling, flipping, we'll get you started. We'll get you rocking and rolling. But I'm telling you, wholesaling is where you should start so you can learn how to do deals. You can learn how to negotiate. You can learn how to find people's bottom like we talked about. If you just come into this live, go back and watch the live again. If you're interested in a ticket, if you're interested in a ticket to come to Skeleton, share this stream. I'll try to give you a free ticket. So, and tag somebody that needs to hear this. Appreciate that, Warren. And I'll see you December 6th, 7th, and possibly 8th if you get Premier VIP in New Orleans. Get there, level up, skill up. I'll see you there. Peace.